Hi, it's Jacqueline. I'm back with my next video. Um, so I just wanted to jump on and do a few quick updates. So I just did a podcast um, with a guy named Chris. He goes by Chi Tash and that will be coming out in about a month. It was about an hour long conversation about everything that I dealt with with long COVID symptoms, treatments. Uh, we sort of went through the whole journey. So if you are interested in that, it will be coming out. I will go ahead and post that in about a month. I also just wanted to come on and just do some quick updates here. Um, overall, I've been very fortunate. As you guys know, I have recovered from long COVID, but I did want to kind of go through a few things. So first of all, I get the question a lot, you know, are you 100% recovered? Are you completely healthy? Do you feel like you did before before COVID? And um, I'm sorry, I'm so distracted. It's so windy here and it's raining really bad. So I don't know if you can hear any of that in the background, but um, it's, it's pretty loud. So anyway, how I guess I want to answer that is I no longer have long COVID. I no longer have long COVID symptoms, but long COVID does reactivate other viruses, as I'm sure most of you are already aware. One of the biggest ones is, of course, the Epstein-Barr virus. I talked to my naturopath this week, and they are seeing high increases of Lyme disease, um, mold numbers, people that had mold before and now have mold numbers that are through the roof after having COVID. So COVID definitely reactivates other viruses. And for me, that has been the Epstein-Barr virus, which I have talked about in other videos. The thing about Epstein-Barr is that you do have to check your levels, obviously, to know, you know if they're reactivated. And my levels have been pretty much the same since uh, 2021. So when I first knew that Epstein-Barr was reactivated was in August of 21, and that's when I was getting hit really, really hard with fatigue. And um, the numbers came back that I had had a reactivation. The last, what, two and a half years, I've been trying to reduce those levels, and I really have not been successful with that. I just did a probably like six to nine months on Valtrex, and my numbers, I just had them tested and they really haven't changed. So therefore we are gonna go down a different route. We're gonna go down a homeopathic route and I am gonna discontinue the use of Valtrex. So I did just wanna go over the, um, the things that I'm gonna be taking. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do these for three months and then I'm gonna retest my levels. I know that the levels can stay elevated for a while and I don't really feel like I'm having any real symptoms because of the Epstein-Barr virus, but the fact that I know that it's there and that the numbers are still detectable and they do, that does bother me. And I do want to get these numbers completely under control and I want them to continue to lower. What we're gonna be doing is, um, we're gonna be doing something, it's a tincture called Epstein-Barr Virus 500X. I'll put some links in the, um, in the description below. So if you wanna look up any of these, um, some of them are gonna be familiar to you, like uh, Monolaurin, I'm gonna do Olive Leaf, L-Lysine, and a Cat Claw Tincture. So I'm gonna do these for about 12 weeks, recheck my levels and see if we've had any movements on them. So of course, I know many have other people have had reactivations of other viruses and I definitely think that can be a driver of some symptoms. Um, luckily for me, all the classic long COVID symptoms that I had are completely gone, um, but this is kind of the last piece of the puzzle that I would like to get completely under control. Next, I just wanted to discuss a few upcoming videos that I wanna do. Um, I do wanna kind of put a pin on the stem cells. Uh, I've had so many videos on stem cell therapy and I wanna sort of wrap it up into all the ways I feel stem cells helped me, um, how what I feel like you can benefit from doing stem cells and what the symptoms were that they helped with. And I kinda wanna put a pin on that and, and, and move on. Um, next, um, I will do an update on John. I know I have said this multiple times. John is doing plasma apheresis. He is doing it every month. He was fortunate enough that his insurance is covering it. And he is seeing great improvements and progress. And he was on a really high dose of prednisone and he is way, way low. He's been able to completely decrease his dosage. So I just need to connect with him. It's just been more of scheduling conflicts and I wanted to really give him enough time so that we know 
how it's affecting him so that I can give you the best possible update. Lastly, I wanna do a video on acute infections, on what I think if you do test positive for COVID, the ways that I really think that you would be able to um, to clear the virus in the most effective way and things that have helped me with acute infections. That's really it for now. Just wanted to do a quick update. Overall, I am better. I am back to training four days a week. Um, my health has been substantially better. So I hope that that continues to give you all hope in knowing that there can be an end to this. And it was interesting to do uh, the podcast today as we really discussed and reflected on, you know, what were some of the most difficult moments of this journey for me. And, and it, it, it did kind of take me back just through everything that I've experienced. And I do know how emotionally, mentally, physically, and financially draining that long COVID could be. So if you're still in the fight, I just think, you know, we just got to keep moving forward and keep hoping that, that things will turn around and things will get better. For now, you guys take care and um, I will be back to, um, to kind of, again, go over the, the other videos that I mentioned. So for now, uh, stay well and peace. Please like and subscribe. Hope everyone has an amazing day.